So this is probably a little late to the game, but having a few discussions online on Red User, I thought I'd go over the Shoot35 and how to correct some of the backlash problems that people have been having. The problem people seem to be having is that this gear here has a little bit of play in it, more than they'd like, and mine, after a lot of tuning, I've still got a little bit of play. It's less than a tooth, but it is still there. I'll, I'll say this is a very good follow focus, especially for £300. Shoot35 have made a fairly decent follow focus here. The uh, gearbox is pretty solid. Uh, the articulating arm has a nice give to it. One thing I don't like so much is the rod clamp. It, it goes on alright, it stays put alright, but once you tighten it down, it can still slide back and forth. And if you get a big hit here, say if you put it down wonky, this can come off the rails. And if you've got a particularly delicate lens, this gear going up into the lens can damage it. For most people, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, if you've got a bridge plate for 19mm bars, it basically goes away, as you won't be hitting this against anything, because you're just that further away from the floor. And that's the only time I ever really have a problem, is when putting this from 19mm bars onto the floor, as you can see, it does sit a bit wonky. It would be nice if this was a little higher, but then I'd have less clearance with um, some of the larger lenses. Now, to adjust the backlash and the dampening, uh, we have two screws, one here, this is the backlash screw, and we have one here, this is the dampening screw. To adjust the dampening screw, we just take a Allen key of the right size, I believe it's 3mm, might be 2.5, it's 2.5. So we take the 2.5 screw, sorry, 2.5 Allen key, we loosen that off just a bit, and then with this locked down, we can rotate that in relation to the backlash screw. I like it fairly tight. Some people like it fairly loose. Once you have it loosened with a 2.5mm Allen key, you can loosen it off by going this way, and you can tighten it down by going this way. All the way loose, is a good place to start when you're doing backlash. So once you have it all the way down, you tighten it back up. And now this spins very easily. I haven't loosened this all of the way, but it does spin very easily and it, you can feel very easily any grind or any wobble you have in the uh, gear, gearing itself. Before adjusting backlash we need to loosen these front screws which hold that whole section in place. You don't need to loosen them much, half a turn each is usually enough. That feels fine now. And make sure at all times this screw stays tight because we need to use that to shift uh, this section compared to this section. Once those are loose, you can then take the 2mm Allen key and just loosen off the one next to the reverse Nikon label. It's just there. And again, we only need half a turn out. We don't need to loosen it all the way. It will shift happily. If we rotate this counterclockwise, you'll start getting very stiff and you might hit a few bumps and when you turn it you'll feel a little bit of riding some bumps like you're catching teeth uh, if we take it back the other way just to the point where we don't feel that maybe bring it back in a little bit more yeah we're still good just a touch more you find the edge where you can turn it freely. Okay, I'm now feeling just the slightest bump. Ever so slight. This is just a touch too tight, so I'll back it off 
a little bit. Still feeling it. I think that's good there. So now I'll lock everything down. Take the 2mm. Tighten that off. Make sure the dampening is tightened. Go over to the front allens. Front screws, sorry. Tighten each of those. Again, I only loosen them off a little bit, so it only takes a little bit to put them back. Let's make sure they're nice and scoop them. Yeah, that feels just like I had it before. Maybe a little better. Now if I put the dampening back to how it was, loosen it off, get it nice and tight. Yeah, just there where you can feel that you're not going to spin forever and ever. And then we can loosen off that top bar and put it back to a nice comfortable position. Once you've gotten to the point where you're happy with how it feels in terms of dampening and there is minimal play in the gear, you can start thinking about actually getting this in use. I'd say when it comes out of the box, it's rarely set up correctly. Uh, with the people that I've talked to, at least. Um, but after a quick bit of adjusting, this becomes rock solid. I mean, you can see that it's turning, but that's mostly because it's turning in my hand here. If I can actually hold that firmly, I can't feel any play in there at all. I've had FF4 units that had more play and felt grittier than this unit. I've had this for a year and a half and I've been using it on many many jobs. Compared to the FF4 I'd say this feels very similar. A lot of the time rental FF4s are very damaged and their gearbox is very sloppy. This, because I can tune that out, hasn't got any of that slop. If I had my own brand new FF4, I'd imagine they'd be in very similar conditions. The FF4 would probably have less uh, abrasions and you know paint coming away. But that's aesthetic. There's there's nothing damaged here. One thing that is is the screw for the extension side. This stripped out and fell out very early on. I had to replace it. I got a whole bag of replacement screws and basically it just makes it a little little less firm on this side. This side definitely has play in it. Even after going in and tightening it up with the screwdriver, it still has a small amount of play, more than what I'd like, but once it's in operation you get used to it, it, it disappears. But it would be nice if this was uh, more securely mounted. You can even see, you know, quite a gap there. That's almost a millimeter there, just between the two housings. If these were flush and there was a firm connection in there, I think this play would disappear almost immediately. I think that's it. If you have any questions about the Shoot35 follow focus, feel free to leave a comment below or leave a comment in the Red User forum page. Thanks for watching.